Senator. Uh, if we could get a full reading, I guess we'd know what's in it, but it's impossible to get it. Full reading. Senator I did. The chair ruled against the senator. Well, why don't you call for a full reading, Senator, if you not if you want to know what's in it? Well, how about letting the rest of us know what's in it, Senator? Well, fine. You you call for a full reading and we can find out, Senator. I think most of us know what well, I did, Senator. I think most of us know what's in it. It's going to certainly go a long way to increase the cost of insurance in this state. It's not only going to do that, it's going to be a great blow to the industrial development in this state because it makes it so much easier to file damage suits, uh, whether cause is justified or not, and it certainly increases the number of awards, uh, the potential at least for awards on damage claims by juries. Whether or not it has a 10 to 2 or the 9 to 3 jury verdict in there, I couldn't say. But I think this, it will put many more lawsuits into the courthouse and change a major philosophy of insurance in this state and certainly is going to cost the motoring public like they've never paid before. I think that point is eminently clear and has been made clear uh, for the whole purpose of the comparative negligence. Now, I don't know if the same... There were reports over the weekend from Washington that Congress might be considering more of uh, a theory of withdrawal with strength from Vietnam. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't quite understand this withdrawal with strength idea, but my own idea is that since it is a no-win war and it's an undeclared war, that it's time we brought the boys home. And my, my own attitude is uh, we've got a lot of things to do in this country to defend America. It's the number one thing in America is to defend America, and we ought to be increasing our defense budget and working for a stronger country. We're letting the Russians get ahead of us, all because we sit and, and, and dilute our effort in Vietnam. And I want to bring everybody home and concentrate on building up our military strength here.
this time we're in stride, we're in movement. I think we're in a measure of understanding, and uh, it's been a great experience. You don't foresee any problems? Oh, not, not problems. We've got privileges. <coughs> I think everybody's delighted over some of the accomplishments that have taken place. What are the uh, recommendations that will come out of this conference? Well, uh, one is very likely is passing two constitutional amendments, <coughs> which are in line with the youth movements of the day, giving youth <coughs> a larger representation in the uh, local annual conference. For instance, two from each district in the conference will be selected and will be seated with the delegates, regardless of how young they are. This is, this is putting elasticity into the conference session. We've had more calcium than elasticity. Kirkland, tell me about finding this money. Well, I was digging the drag line that's out there on uh, Walnut Hill Lane, and uh, I dug up one bucket full, dumped it out there, and I found a twenty dollar bill, a bunch of them. So I put them in my pocket, and I went on get kept digging. And after a while, I saw some more out there, and it was a whole bunch, some one hundred dollar bills, a bunch of packages of them, and a bunch of packages of fifty dollar bills. So I put them all in a rag and took them up my truck and uh, went to the 7-Eleven store and called the uh, sheriff's office and they came out there and investigated and they took it with them. Did the sheriff's office ever count the money in your presence? No, they counted it in their car. In their car, you didn't witness them counting the money? No, sir, I didn't. How much money do you think there was? Well, I didn't know. I knew it was thousands of dollars.
fall for it, just buy it. Here you go. Ben said, not 25, 10 in this area. Now Lester does it again. I would say to you that the very fact that we're receiving these nominations from all our colleagues in the Senate is ample proof that the members of the Senate are trying to help us in this effort to get this bill killed. They're backing us up. They're supporting us in this, in this filibuster effort. If they weren't in support of us, they wouldn't be standing here asking questions like Senator Brooks has done and like so many other senators have done. They wouldn't be sending up names of people that they want for the Hall of Heroes. This just Hall of Heroes gives us an opportunity to talk all the time to make our point and we're getting the support from the senators that we wish to get. So we're just delighted with that. We've had a good time discussing Texas history and we've had a good time talking about some of the fantastic and colorful people that have uh, been on the scene in Texas for many, many years. But it's a vehicle, very frankly, to give us in an effort to get the time to solve and put the pressure to kill this bill. I think we've got it killed. We're going to knock on wood and so and keep talking until we get a little bit better feel and a little bit better support. I don't go much for his program of making the cities, um, as it were, sort of states unto themselves with a direct relationship to the federal government. First of all, I think the states have to recognize a much closer alliance with the cities, and then in turn, they have their relationship with the federal government. Uh, but as far as making the, the cities, at this point in time, making the cities a real city-state, so, uh, so to speak, with a direct relationship to the federal government, I don't go much for it. Members of the Texas legislature got off to a rather slow start today in spite of the fact that it's the last day of the session and there are untold numbers of bills pending, many of them considered very important. The slow start probably was due to the late hour that both houses worked last night. The Senate, completing a record-setting filibuster by Don Kennard of Fort Worth as he attempted to stop the University of Texas at Dallas bill. The bill has been stopped so far. It would have created the, a four-year institution from one which now accepts only juniors, seniors, and postgraduate students. Kennard was congratulated heartily by his fellow senators when he passed that record-setting mark. In the House of Representatives, members worked into the early morning hours today. After a log jam created by the members of the so-called Dirty 30 yesterday, which blocked passage of legislation during the afternoon, House Speaker Gus Mutcher re submitted those bills for consideration during the day today, and he sloughed off criticism that that logjam developed because of his so-called vindictiveness brought out in the House redistricting bill. During the past 140 days, I wanted to devote complete energies toward uh, handling the legislative process in the best manner we know how, and we all, we all really have a great number of problems to solve in 140 days, so there won't be any uh, shortage of issues. But when you check back and the record has been closed for the 140 days, I think we've accomplished more in this session of the legislature in 140 days than any time in the last 10 years. <laughs>